every time it goes so fast, I never know when I'm live and when I'm not live. You know, I'm not sure what I want to talk about, so we're going to take it kind of a moment at a time and see. I was actually supposed to be on Twitch, but I could not get any of the equipment to work today. And it's been about 30 minutes trying to get it to work, and I was like, fuck it, never mind. <laughs> never mind, I'll sort it out later. Um, I'm, you know, I can't do it. So, but I did feel like I was supposed to go somewhere today, just apparently not there. I was not supposed to go there, so. What I decided to do was come on here and talk a little bit about that topic, about how sometimes we try to force things that don't feel, that are too hard to get done in the, in the moment. You, you know, I normally do a stream on Saturday, what's today, Saturday? Okay, Saturdays. And when I do the stream, I always make sure, you know, everything is good ahead of time. And then, but sometimes it just doesn't, everything starts to start going sideways. And when things start going sideways on us, our human part wants to continue to push through. You know, we don't want to, we don't want to not finish what we started, even though from the beginning, this whole thing was a debacle trying to get all this stuff online today. So when this starts to happen, what you're going to see is your human starts to take over very quickly, right? Your human's going to take over and be like, don't worry, you just keep keep pushing through it, you know, you'll get it, you'll get it. And there is a part of this process where sometimes we do feel like we're supposed to push through because we're kind of pushing through fear, or you're pushing through an emotion, you're, you're pushing through to the other side of something. So you kind of feel like I'm supposed to do this, right? I'm not supposed to give up, I'm not supposed to call it in, I'm supposed to continue to go. And there are other times when you feel like you're pushing against something that you're not supposed to do today. You know, you're pushing against something that this is not what you're supposed to do, go do something else. And it's a fine line in the beginning to try to figure it out. And even for me sometimes, when I get my mind set on something, like doing my stream on today, because I won't be able to do my stream on Twitch for a week or so, because I'll be into some other stuff next week. You can find yourself really getting one focused on something. So when you're kind of in that moment where you're like, do I push or do I lay back? Look at the part of you that's trying to push it. If you're trying to push it from your highest aspect, you're trying to push it from an aspect of yourself that really wants to get something done because you know there's a higher purpose in you doing it and you're pushing through the emotion of fear, normally if that's where I am, I'll keep going. And if there's a fear of doing it is greater than the fear of not doing it, I will go there. Because it means for me that I'm supposed to go there. You know, it means that it's a conscious act to work through something. And when you're in a conscious act to work through something, you really have to look at why. You know, why do, why do I, why is my initial reaction to run away from this? Is this something I'm supposed to continue to, to work through? And we talk a lot about when we're in our unconscious phases, when you're, when you're in our human realities, when we're in our pre-ascension realities or really our pre-awakening realities, we'll tend to push through things and we'll tend to, still working through programming, it's a more physical kind of slog through it because we're, we're working through the physical reality to, to clear something. We're working through the physical reality to get to the other side of something. We're not working through the physical reality for the reasons we think we are. You know, we're always doing it for another reason. And everything you're going to do, you're always doing it from another for another reason. You're never doing it for the reason you think you're doing it for. So the human reason you're there is not the reason you're supposed to be there. The human reason you're there is what gets you there in your pre-ascension phases, but it's not why you're supposed to be there. There's always a billion other reasons why you're there. The question becomes, can you start to figure them out? You know, what other reason am I here? Why am I in this reality right now? What other thing can I give to this, to this, to this reality? What can I give to this illusion? Because it is an illusion. And, but how can I, am I supposed to improve this? Am I supposed to wake other people up? Which it's going to be a zillion reasons why you're anywhere. So sometimes we're going to find ourselves where we really feel the need to push through it right because there's something in us that says you got to keep going and, and it comes from a different place it's a place you don't really identify at first and it but it's not the pushing through it 
because you don't want to energetically look at it. You don't want to realize there's a problem. You don't want to realize there's an issue going on. So there's going to be a lot of times where you're kind of on the fence with stuff. And you don't know, do you, do you, I can't remember the phrase, do you stick or do you twist? You know, <laughs> do I keep going? Is this a sign this shit is not supposed to happen? Or is this a sign meaning I'm supposed to persevere through it? And you got to check in with yourself. And that's a very generic thing to say. And everyone will say that. you got to check in with yourself. And it's like, okay, but what does it mean? What does it mean to check in with myself? You know, I mean, everyone's going to say that. Just like everybody says, oh, I'm on a journey. Everyone's on a fucking journey. You know, you hear it so many times, you don't even know what it means. And you start to tune out these words. A lot of our ascension words, the people that were the first through, and even though I say through, meaning that they were the first ones to get to certain parts of ascension, still not finished because they're never, you're never going to be finished. But even the forerunners that came came through and did a lot of this stuff before all of us are doing it now, you know, they get to a certain point where they they don't they didn't even have markers set up. You know, they didn't know what they were doing. You know, and now they're kind of there for us and then they show other people and then the next wave comes through. You know, you do work on that three wave system. We've talked about the three waves quite a bit. You have three waves in each awakening stage. You have the 2010 to the 2020s and there's three waves in that. So I did my first pre-awakening ascension around 2013. So I was more in that second wave of the first waivers, you know, because when you get to 2020, everything's going to collapse. So everyone, those three stages that came in in that first wave are technically first waivers. Then you have the 2020 to 2030s, which are going to be the second waivers, which you're going to have three different distinctions in that 10 year period. And you, you do the 10 year period because it takes so long. So you have the first group of people who came through who didn't even know what they were doing. You know, they didn't even know, I mean, they were getting downloads, they were getting in certain information, they were remembering things, they were starting to wake up, but they didn't even really know what they were doing they were at a certain point. So you're gonna find yourself in a similar place where you're not even realizing what you're doing until you're at a certain point, until you're at a point where you can look back at everything and say, I see why I had to go go there and I see why I had to stop there. I see why that was not something I was supposed to pursue. And then I see why I was supposed to do that. Look at the part of you that is trying to push it through. Oh, <laughs> I see. Um, yeah, you will forget. I have a someone who said they forgot because uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat the question just because I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on a couple of different places. You do forget your downloads you got two years ago. I'll forget this stream as soon as I do it. I'll promise you. I can look back at stuff I did yesterday, and I couldn't tell you a thing I said in it. And it's not that I couldn't get back to that frequency in that place. If you need to be there, you'll be able to kind of tap into it and get it. But it's not something you're going to be able to get to by trying to remember to get to it. You know, there are some things I'll look at a video I did and I'll be like, oh, yeah, working through obsession energy. And I'll think, I'm like, I have no idea what I said in there. I have no idea how you do that now. How would I do that? Why would I even? Because I'm not in that place anymore. And a lot of the stuff, we, we were in that place. We get it. We integrate it in. And then we move on to the next phase. And it doesn't, it's not so much that you forget it, you just simulate it in where you don't have to really try to remember it in a sense. But if you need the information to call on it, you'll be able to get there. You know, you'll be able to find it. You'll be able to, to do it. Now, when I do any stream, any video, my eyes are always reading my field, which came to me, I started doing that about a year and a half ago. They're always moving <laughs> and very rarely looking at the camera, which is just, just alarming. This is alarming to some people. Because you start reading your field. So, you know, you'll be able to find the information because it is there. It's just sometimes it becomes outdated in a sense because the frequency you're at now is no longer the frequency you were. So, yes, it was pivotal in that moment, but now it really doesn't matter. Yeah, it opened up a portal. Yeah, it opened up a remembrance for me. And it seemed at the time so pivotal to, to what I was doing. 
but now it's not anymore because you're past that now. It doesn't mean if you had written that down or did a video on that two years ago when you had that that integration, that remembrance, that it wouldn't it wouldn't be out there and someone would be in that place and go, oh, I really resonate with that. Whereas you might not resonate with it, any, with it anymore because to you it's kind of old news. It's kind of a rung on the ladder. You know, you kind of, we got to get to certain places and we feel like, you know, you see so many videos and everyone will label it, you know, the most important thing you're ever going to hear. And I'm just like, I'll promise you it's not. <laughs> it's never going to be the most important thing. It might be important to you in that moment. It's not the most important thing you're ever going to hear. It's always going to change. It's always going to be something else. It's always going to be a new remembrance. Now, right now you're seeing the collectives go through a massive remembrance about galactic intelligence. Galactic, there are a lot of galactic... Um, DNA, the galactic aspects with all the UFO stuff going on now and all the, the, the congressional hearings and it's kind of funny that when I, wa I watch a little bit of it just to kind of get a get an idea of what's going on in the collectives, I was like, I can't believe more people aren't talking about it. I can't believe more people aren't covering it. And it kind of comes back to we get so ingrained in our own human journey that when you start, to, the collectives have to kind of get hit on the head to start opening up to something else. You know, you saw it during COVID to open up to something else. They had to get hit on the head. But when we were opening up to Ascension and Awakening, we did too. It wasn't so much where we just sat there and said, oh, okay, you know, I'm just going to now give up my whole human existence and go do something else I don't understand. I don't know how it works. I just know I'm going to give all this up. It doesn't work that way. We're not we're not DNA coded that way. We have to almost be ripped out of it, and not ripped out of it in a sense of the movie The Matrix, where he just leaves. Let me just get pulled out of my pod, and now I'm up here, and it's all fine. Yeah, it's kind of dis discombobulating that all that was not really real. But you know, we're just gonna go go on with the movie. It takes us a long time to disconnect. It takes us a long time to exit out of those human realities. And that's why you go through fourth dimensional realities. You go through fifth dimensional, you know, you go through that quasi period where you, you can kind of feel fifth dimensional, but you still have your foot rooted in third dimensional, which is more of the human, human collective aspects, the human realities, not three, third dimensional as a physical reality where you, you see that depicted where that's the only real one. That's the consciousness. It's third dimensional consciousness. Then you have fourth dimensional consciousness, which is sort of a purgatory where we all set for a very long period of time. And then we go into fifth dimensional and we get into fifth dimensional. We start to open up to heavenly realities, open up to the possibility of heavenly, um, what's the word? heavenly it's not ideas it, it's more the feeling of what it could be and colors are brighter we start opening up to it we start feeling the frequencies that's what I'm going for but we haven't actually done anything yet. we haven't actually built anything we haven't dissolved our own shit yet you know so we we fourth, fourth dimensional is purgatory and the common is you know it feels like purgatory and that's exactly what it is it is a purgatory and just like purgatory in any movie you ever see purgatory, any literature you see purgatory written about, people don't realize they're in purgatory when they're in purgatory. When we're in purgatory, fourth dimensional realities, which is you have a foot in both worlds. That, that's how a lot of people will explain it. We think we're somewhere else. We think we're in the 20th dimension. You know, we think we're so beyond everything. And a lot of that spiritual ego. We get into a lot of that type of thing. We get into a lot of trying to take fifth dimensional and above because fifth dimensional is only the beginning you know like i said that's just the intro <laughs> that's just people call it the gates of heaven the beginning of ascension in a sense you're you're not really doing anything yet you're not anchoring in you're not you haven't bought those realities in you haven't taken things the downloads down and anchored them into the root yet you know they're not real you know, they're still very fake. They're not a real reality. They're kind of a, it's still an illusion. It's just a nicer one, but we're still kind of in that purgatory phase. And when we're in that phase, we think we're not there. We think we are in the 10 dimensional realities. We feel like we keep going and, and that's okay. <laughs> what I will see though, is people can get stuck there. 
in a sense. And I will see people that are in there for 15, 20 years that are still channeling, that are still talking about spirit guides, which are still talking about all these things. Um, and it's, it's kind of funny because all those things, yeah, they're higher concept reality. They're higher concept remembrances, right? When you start thinking about, oh, wait, it's not just me. I have spirit guides. You know, I have people who are trying to assist me. I can tap into other things. I'm going to channel. You see a lot of people channeling what they'll call alien races. You see a lot of people doing that, and they still call it channeling. The secret books channel work. Um, the Seth books channeled work. Those are all channeled work. And by channeling, I mean someone is feeling like they're tapping into something that is not them. And ascension is embodying in those aspects because you can only channel what is you. You can't channel what is not you. It's impossible. That's how vast we are. We're only going to channel ourselves. We're just channeling higher aspects of ourselves. We might be channel channeling if you want to go down the UFO alien, you know, you're channeling, you're, ta you're channeling the people who are channeling aliens, they're channeling an alien aspect of themselves, an alien race of themselves. It's still themselves. You know, it's nothing beyond that. We can't do more than that. It's not possible to. So people who get, but you will see people who don't want to move off channeled. One, it sells, you know, people, some people love it, some people hate it. Some people don't like channel work, they discredit it. Other people don't like when you claim to be that. They'd rather see you channel that, you know, and say, okay, I'm channeling this entity. You know, where there's no such thing as an entity. It's just you. It's, it's, an, it's another aspect of you, but you're not at the frequency of that aspect to embody it in. Because when you start getting to that frequency and you embody in that aspect, you now have to rearrange everything in your life where you don't live that aspect. If you're going to embody in Christ energy, or you're going to now have to look at where am I not showing up as Christ energy in every reality I deal with. And that can take years <laughs> to straighten out. That can take years to be able to look at a reality and say, I'm not doing that here. You know, I'm not being that here. Now I'm being something else. I'm not, I am not showing up in my highest reality here. You know, if you're going to embody in, even if you're going to go with the alien races, if you're going to embody in a Syrian aspect, which is very no nonsense, no nonsense kind of a flip to a God energy aspect. You know, it's kind of a, this is two sides of the same coin in a sense. It's just the galactic version of that type of energy. Anywhere you're not showing up as commander and creator of your universe, of your realities, you're going to be forced to look at it and you're going to be forced to fix it. And that's what embodiment is. And that's when we start getting out of purgatory. We're getting out of having any connection to human realities and how they're constructed. Now, when I say that, a lot of people will get kind of, well, what do you mean? Like, we don't have bank accounts? We don't... <laughs> Whatever people think when you say that, you mean you don't have a life, you know? You don't have anything that resembles, like you go set on a on a hill and, and you're meditating for, you know, 80 hours a day or something or a week. Ascension and embodiment is taking those higher aspects and you live from those and you dedicate your life around living from those aspects, living for humanity. You're now showing up, not in your human, teeny human aspect, you're showing up as something else. You're showing up as the highest aspect of yourself you can achieve in that moment. And I'm going to say that because you can always get to a different aspect and a higher aspect of that. But we have to clear all our human DNA to be able to do that. If we do not clear our human DNA, we're not able to go to that next phase. You know, we're not able to go forward in that sense until we work through all the fear around leaving it all behind and all the betrayal energy that we have come up, all the greed, shame, blame, all that stuff has to leave our body before we can integrate in all these aspects, all of our different aspects of our soul. A lot of times in the videos I'll say, you know, you got a human aspect and a soul aspect. It keeps it simple, but there's so much more than that. A lot of different, you know, zillions of aspects make up your soul and the soul's not in the body. 
it can't be in there all the way. It's too much other crap in there. So we have to clear that stuff out. That's when we talk about embodiment. It's a body process. You go through body clearings. You go through all these phases where you start having symptoms. A lot of people have a lot of very physical symptoms because it is a physical process. We have to remove our physical body from our old human realities and they don't look the same. One thing where a lot of people, and I did the same thing, so I speak from experience, we, we try to take the, the higher dimensional concept and cram them back into a human reality, you know, because we think we can make that work. You know, we feel like we're going to take all this fifth dimensional remembrances, people will call it higher dimensional knowledge about how realities are constructed, but I'm going to attain it a bit. I, I, I'm going to bask bastardize it a bit and I'm going to try to make it fit back in here so I can still kind of stay in my human reality yet live a higher dimensional life and we spend a lot of times trying to do that you know we spend a lot of times trying to align shit and realign shit that just is not aligned and people that aren't aligned and people that weren't supposed to be there for the rest of for the next part of your journey and we keep trying to twist it and we keep trying to make it work when it just isn't supposed to you know it just isn't supposed to work and that's not easy for us when, when we realize that like I want this to work but it's not working I want this to be sort of the next phase I go through but I, I can't really get it there you know I, I can't really get it to the next phase and then we get to that phase where we have to decide. Do I keep trying to align it? Do I leave it behind? We go through a lot when we're in that fourth dimensional phase. We just leave a lot of stuff behind because we don't know how to align it from our highest place. We don't really understand what that is yet. We can't hold our frequency around other people. You know, we have a hard time holding our frequency, holding our highest thing. We can do it here, we can't do it there. We want to be by ourselves a lot. And a lot of this journey is by yourself. And I still would rather be by myself. But there are, there is a phase we have to start living with people again. Just to show you can hold your highest when you're living with other people. It, it's not... It, it's almost like it's a rite of passage where you have to... You can talk about unity consciousness, but you have to go kind of live that. And, and understand what that means. And understand what can you bring to a reality. You go... Sometimes we go back into old realities to and bring a different aspect of ourselves and see how it all starts to shift and change around us. There's so many stages and phases you go through. And one thing I always say, because I didn't do it at the time, is appreciate the phase you're in. Because sometimes the next phase, we want that phase to end because it's not what we thought it would be. It's not the sexy reality we thought everything would be. You know, when I see a lot of videos about you know different concepts relating to this type of this type of stuff and a lot of people just they claim all this stuff you know attract money attract all this stuff and I'm like it, it doesn't work like that it can you attract certain things yeah but you're still attracting it from an ego place which means the reality is not gonna be what you thought it would be you know it's still coming from a distorted reality it's still coming from a place that is not your highest aspect it, it's it's not you're not attracting from a place that's your purest aspect and because you're not doing that you just get into another karmic reality and we, we just keep circling around until we kind of get tired of that and then we have to learn to a lot of times most of us have to go without um, we have to go without money and a lot of stuff or, or lim very limited money because we have to learn to appreciate what we have we have to also learn to contribute something besides money because the human realities are so based on money we have to learn we have other things to contribute that's not money and that's a big one for a lot of us especially if we've always contributed the money to a reality and when we're not contributing that we have to learn to appreciate other things besides money, our presence in a reality, what we can bring to it, and not just, oh, let me show up with the, the purse bag for this reality. Because if we had the purse bag in the beginning, we would not know what to do with it. We would maybe give it to family, give it to friends. I see so many people say, well, if I got won the lottery, I'd give all my friends all this money. Well, that might not be the highest aligned thing to do. That might not be what you do. And that might be robbing them of what they're supposed to go do. 
You know, they might be supposed to be going to do something that's going to, and in a sense, maybe they have to go through a train wreck. But if you give them that money, then all of a sudden that doesn't happen now. That hampers their awakening process. So we thought we were doing what sounded like the right thing, but in reality, it's not the highest aligned thing. But because we can't see that yet, we don't understand that yet. Um, yeah, everything is really about aligning and holding our aspects. So when we think about we have to be able to align it and hold it, but that means we have to live it. That does not, and that's when we get into the spirituality and how a lot of it's, it's a gateway for a lot of us. You know, the galactic things are a gateway for a lot of people. They get into the stars, they get into astrology, numerology. Those are all gateways to, to ascension and ways to get us in, activate our knowledge. But we have to be able to hold it and we have to be able to live it and we have to be able to not just meditate for 20 minutes a day, connect to something, then disconnect and to go live in our human aspect and go live our lives from our human perspective. But you see a lot of people that stay there for, for years, years and years and years and years. Our extraction process from third dimensional realities is not overnight, it is years. It takes years to deprogram, to clear the body of a human DNA. It takes years to reprogram the body with higher template DNA. It is not an overnight process. Anyone who tells you it's an overnight process has not done the process yet. They, they feel like they've done it. And we go back to fourth dimensional, that purgatory feeling where we feel like we're out of it when we're way still in it. Because a few things might start to click a little bit and you go, okay, now I'm into this. But until you have to realign everything and everything looks completely different, I always think it's interesting when you see people say how easy it all is when they haven't had to align anything yet. They haven't had to quit their jobs. They haven't had to leave their house. They haven't had to do any of this stuff because those things weren't aligned. They haven't had to make those choices yet. And because they haven't had to make those choices yet, they don't understand that realigning your realities, those are made up of those types of choices where you have to choose. Am I going to do the highest aligned thing here or am I gonna stay and hold on to these realities that are, are kind of slipping away? Um, it's about aligning our reality and holding it. But that might mean that when we do that, other people that were in that original reality don't wanna play in that anymore. You know, they made an agreement to help us, you know, stand up for ourselves. Well, the minute we stand up for ourselves, because now we're going to embody Syrian aspect, which is very no-nonsense aspect, galactic aspect, galactic race. You can talk about embodying in your, activating your God particle and living, starting to living as God and creator of, and in control of everything in your reality. The minute you step into that kind of power, anyone who is in your reality to get you to step into that kind of power they might not want to be around for that kind of power. That wasn't their agreement. That, their agreement was to get you there. The minute they get you there, whether they're conscious of that or unconscious of that, majority unconscious of that, we were too. But the minute they get you to that, peace out. They don't want to be there anymore. But we take that personal. <laughs> we get pissed at that. That, oh, they don't want to be here anymore. I wanted them to be here and they're not here. It hurts my feelings, you know. And then that gets personal to us because we don't understand. Why don't you want to still be in this reality? Because they're going to go play that out with someone else. Because that's what they're supposed to do. It's not their time yet. You know, everyone's on a different DNA clock here. You can't have the whole planet go through ascension at the same time. Can you imagine the chaos? Look at the chaos on a micro level in our individual lives when we start going through ascension. Imagine that on a global scale of everyone going through ascension. I mean, we look at, you know, if, if anyone is following all the stuff that's coming out about UFOs and... And the, the reaction, and I'll say that they're just aspects of us. You know, people see them physically, it's an activator for them. If you have no fear of aliens, you're not going to see one. <laughs> Promise. There's no point to it. There's no reality where that makes sense where you would see one, right? Because you have no fear of it. It's always, and you never see the aliens that look like us. You know, there are some races that look like us. And a lot of people will channel those races, channel those races because they look like us. So there's a comfort level there, right? It, it's a level that people feel comfortable with. A lot of people channel Palladian because Palladians look, look like we do, you know? So they're like, oh, I'm going to channel that, but I don't want to channel some of these other races that, you know, everyone sees the same one. It's got the big, it looks totally 
alien and not like us because it brings up a lot of fear. That's what this is getting to. It's bringing up fear. But I can look at the flip of that. Okay, what if the whole world was so focused on this right now? What if everyone's focused on UFOs and focused on alien sightings? It would, it would be so disruptive to absolutely everything. It would be complete pandemonium. You know, it would be, everyone would, their, their reality is so channeled. You know, a lot of people will say that, you know, the Earth is a galactic prison. You'll see that take a lot. A lot of people have had that remembrance that we're all kind of galactic. We're all from all the galactic wars. You know, that's why they always say, well, how come these, all these UFOs, you know, from a human perspective, why don't they attack? Well, we've always fought each other. That's why when you get to your galactic family, you can't be around them for a long period of time because it's too much bad blood. You don't know why you don't want to be around them, but you'll get together to do something to create something and then it's, you know, get out of here. I don't want to huddle up with you. You know, I, I, we're here for this and go on. You have a different mission than I do. You might dream of the galactic councils. You might dream of, and I say dream because when you're dreaming, you tap into those higher frequencies you can't hit with your body yet. One thing that people have the disconnect on dreaming, when we dream, we disconnect. We, we're connecting to something else. We disconnect from what the body limits are, in a sense. The minute we wake up, we're back into the frequency of the body and we haven't anchored in those realities yet, meaning our physical body's vibration is not the vibration of that reality. The minute it is the vibration of that reality, you will have that reality create around you. But you're not there yet, meaning our body's not there yet. So because our body's not there yet, we don't see that. That's why we forget. Some stuff you remember, some stuff you forget. A lot of it you don't remember. Usually from what I started noticing is the stuff right before I wake up, right before you go to sleep, sometimes that comes in quicker because the frequency of that and your body is a little bit closer. Now, what is quicker? It depends on how hard you're working toward those things, you know, to bring those things in. You have to ask, I want to anchor in that reality. What do I got to do to get there? So people work on that 24 seven. People that are like me, I work on that stuff 24 seven. Other people, they're not there yet. You know, it might take them five years to span a, a teeny shift in their frequency where when you're operating from higher aspects, you might be able to jump that in no time at all and do more like quantum jumping into different frequencies and in different realities. But those are things human aspects can't do. We can't operate like that from a human aspect. But if you had everybody focused on UFOs, complete pandemonium, the whole world starts to dissolve. So you have some people that are interested in it. Some people are activated by that. And some people think it's interesting. You know, some people are like, oh, let's just think about that. But you notice the guys it's coming in under, a human threat, same way COVID came in, right? It's a threat to us. It's a threat to human. All of a sudden you got human aspect of tension when it's a threat to humans. Like, wait a minute, there's a threat to us? And it kind of, I had a f girlfriend once that would talk about you know, this is years ago, and she talked about what women were really, really interested in listening. You know, a doctor might tell them something about some something that was going on with them, and they could tell them everything. But the minute they got to that one thing, like, oh, you might put on weight, you start to tune in, you go, oh, I'm sorry, did you say I was going to put on weight? And it could have been a whole list of other things that could happen, but until they said put on weight, we weren't paying any attention. Same thing kind of with the human aspect. Until you get to wait, we have, wait, we're in danger? <laughs> human, human race is in danger? You now have my attention. I don't care about all that other stuff you talked about, you know, but the minute you said my life was in danger, I'm now engaged. That's our human, that is the human aspect in a nutshell. If you're trying to figure out what is my human aspect, that's it. It is in it for itself. If it feels itself threatened, it's going to buck up. It's going to see what's going on. It's going to do everything. You saw the same thing in COVID. You know, you saw that was more from, to me, more of a soul, soul activation COVID because it pulled us out of all those realities on a global scale that weren't aligned anymore that we weren't going to leave on our own. It pulled us away from blood family. It pulled us away from jobs. It pulled us away from all this stuff that we were kind of maybe looking for a reason to get out of it. It also made us focus on certain relationships. Are they going to stick? Are they going to twist? To the point where people, and it made us be by ourselves, which humans don't want to do. Because it just all the other shit distracts us from being alone and figuring out what's going on with us. So COVID was this big, this big activation that did all these things. You know, 
from from a human perspective it was some pandemic from a higher perspective everyone was going through different pockets or going through very similar ascension type of things and when they're going through very similar ascension type of beats it's going to be labeled as a pandemic right because everyone's got the same thing going on but it's just different collectives going through different stages of ascension clearing in certain ways clearing their physical body in certain ways and now you see it now on kind of the flip with the UFO stuff where now people are kind of engaging in that from a galactic perspective. It's activating their galactic aspects. But it's still bringing up all that fear. And it gets the humans noticed because, oh my God, I'm in danger. <laughs> That's the one way all of your higher aspects get the human, it's going to get your human attention. Oh my God, I'm in danger. <laughs> Am I in danger? Well, wait a minute. Let's, let's look and talk about it. I'm now open to listening because, oh my God, I'm in danger. So you can just start to see this stuff happening for all the collectives. You can start to see so many of the collectives that are now really starting to break down into kind of different segments in a sense. What, what activated some people? It didn't activate others because it wasn't their time to activate. You're seeing with the UFO stuff and the, the congressional stuff going on with that, that's activating everyone on a galactic scale. But it's still just breaking through fear. That's all it is. I mean, it. like I said, if you have no fear of aliens, you're never gonna see one. It's never gonna be a thing for you because you embrace that those aspects of yourselves. You understand that those are just galactic races. And if I go back to what a lot of people have remembered is it's Earth being kind of a galactic prison. A lot of times when I talk to people in a galactic phase, they really resonate, resonate with that. You know, they really go, yeah, that I, I get that that we're kind of all sentenced here in the sense to work off galactic karma. So, you know, you know, it, it's kind of a, an interesting way to, to kind of reframe Earth in general, you know, and what it is here for and what it does and what's the purpose of it. So when you see all this stuff and you, we start to really break out of different human mindsets when we look at how many different ways can I see this? You know, how many different perspectives can I see on this? Is there a higher perspective reason all this stuff is going on beyond just the daily kind of stuff, beyond just the, the, the momentary beats? You know, is this something I should be engaged in? Is this, is this something I should push through? Do I let this, do I kind of let this go to the wayside? How do I feel about these things? Do, do I have a fear about it? If we have a fear about it, we have to go there. You know, we can't, our human wants to not go with the fear. It wants to kind of go around the fear. It wants to, you know, kind of pretend the fear's not there. We know we have to get through it because it's what holds us back. All this stuff we don't want to deal with holds us back. That's why we get, I was going to say stuck, but I don't want to say stuck, but we get into a lot of realities that aren't sexy realities that we don't want to do. And we're like, if these are highest aligned, why do I got to be here? This is not what I wanted, you know? Maybe I wanted my next step to be, step to be living, in, I don't know, living in Hawaii somewhere on, on the ocean. But I can't get to that reality till I trudge through some of this other stuff. Till I trudge through and start working through programming I have around relationships. Working through human programming I have around my parents, uh, you know, siblings. You know, insert here, whatever it is for you. It, it, it doesn't matter what it is. It's we have to work through that stuff, but that's not what the human's going to want to do. The human's going to want to go straight to what it wants to do. And when it doesn't work out the way it wanted it to, we don't understand that. But it didn't work out the way we thought it was because we still carried all of our shit with us. <laughs> we didn't work through any of it. We didn't get to any reality to work through it. We just went on because that's where we want to be. And that's what the human's going to do. So I open this with talking about me trying to push through something that obviously was not meant to be. And I think I'm going to end it on that too. Notice what part of yourself is pushing. <laughs> and would it be easier just to say, oh, okay, let, let me just do something else. You know, let me just take a beat. I'm going to go do something else. I'm not going to worry about all this other stuff right now. Feel how your body feels about it. What part of you, what aspect of you is pushing it? What aspect of you is saying, I have to get this done right now? Or is it just more of, I get this tunnel vision. Human's going to get tunnel vision, right? And that's all we can see. And, and a lot of times when you're talking to someone in their human aspect, you don't get that connection because <clears throat> that's all they can see. But that's how we were too. 
all they can see is that teeny little thing. And when they can only see that teeny little thing, it can be frustrating for us when we can see so much more. So many more things we can do. If we could just work through our shit that's in this teeny little part of our aspect, but we can't work through that shit, so now none of this other stuff can happen. Because we're so focused on this, we can't see anything else. And we have to learn to let that stuff go and resolve it on our own and leave those realities behind. Everyone won't come with you. That doesn't mean some people won't come with you. Our human's gonna, our ego plays that card with us too, like, oh, you're gonna have to leave everything. Well, you don't know that. You, you don't know who's gonna be on in the next reality with you. You don't know what aspect of them is gonna show up. I do feel like a lot of times there has to be a reset point for a lot of realities. Human doesn't like to get that reset point. It doesn't like to have to reset. It doesn't like that time to reset a reality. Human wants to jump right back in it. You know, you have to have the reset. You have to have time for the reality to reset, to upgrade. It might take a year for you even enter into anything similar to that again with those people. But you have to allow the reset. If you don't allow the reset, you will start to just keep going through the same thing again and again and again and again because we never give our body time to clear we never give ourselves time to clear i can be in a new reality for months before everything from the old reality starts to really clear and in a physical sense and in an emotional sense you know kind of hand in hand so just kind of be aware of that be aware where you're kind of afraid of the reset and letting yourself get to that point where okay now i'm going to try to reset everything and allow my body the time to reset and completely upgrade out of that reality and be ready to plant somewhere else and anchor in the new one I have instead of being so focused on the old. So, okay, I think I'm gonna leave it there today. I appreciate everybody joining uh, and the questions. I always enjoy questions and I guess that's it.